So, how to assign this photovoltaic electrical performance model? In the navigation panel, let's go to the solar collector and click. And we see there are two options. Layout is the geometry and we have the construction. If you click construction, you see the construction solar collector extended. Here, here are the properties. Now, the solar collector type here should be photovoltaic. We are not modeling solar hot water system. It should be the second type. You can ignore the cost and look at the photovoltaic options. The performance type, we have two choices, simple and equivalent one diet. The simple one, as it, uh, as it signifies, is just a simple constant solar radiation conversion efficiency for the entire year. Or you can hook it up to a schedule, but it is kind of fixed and it is not coming from a uh, electrical performance model, but equivalent one diet is more responsive to the environmental conditions because it is kind of a four parameter electrical analogy circuit model, which is very detailed. And it is a kind of characterizing the photovoltaic modules performance under different solar radiation levels, under different outdoor temperatures and the uh, cell temperatures. So, uh, and we have information from manufacturer's data to develop equivalent one diode electrical performance model. We will come back to this later. Heat transfer integration mode is decoupled. That's correct. Because our solar PVs are kind of detached from the building structure. It is not integrated to the envelope. So there is no heat transfer integration, heat flux integration or uh, interaction of the PV with the system. So we are not modeling this type. And so we can say the type one decoupled. String series strings in parallel should be one, always connected in parallel, but modules in series, this is very important. And remember, this area is five times the unit PV area. So I have five units connected in series. So in your case, in your simulation, you should pay attention to this number, multiplier number, and find the right number of modules that's assumed to be connected in series. Level is building fine. Material is bitumen felt. You can keep it as it is if you like the typical dark blue color. But if you want to visualize your solar PV with a customized surface color, you can change this surface color and texture. But this is not performance affecting nothing. It's just for visualization. Let's go back to this performance model. When I click on it, on the right hand side, I have a default library, black, some additional elements that I worked before. But here you can use one of the PV performance models in the library. That's OK. Or you can create your own PV performance model, electrical model. So that's what we are going to do. So we click on it and nothing is selected, but we say add new item to the library. When we say add new item, we have this dialog box. This is the entire input requirements to create a photovoltaic performance model, including the name. So we can give it a name, say solar SW100 mono. This is the name. The name is optional. You can give it whatever you like. And the cell type, the solar cell technology is crystalline silicon. You can also work on amorphous silicon type, but here it's crystalline. Let's move on with the other input data. Cells in series. Again, for most of these, we will refer to the manufacturer's data, right? So we give the name. And uh, as I told you, there's a range of input data already provided by the design builder program. Let's go back. Range of input data. These are the default, but we will keep some of these at the default values as unchanged, but, but uh, while at the same time we will adjust some of the other input parameters according to the information that we get from the manufacturer's specification for the specific PV module under investigation. And starting from the manufacturer's data, here is the manufacturer's data we were looking at it before. Again, just zoom out a little bit and we see that the cells per module is 72. I will go back and just 72. 
Active area. Remember, we calculated the active area, right? So I just go back and just copy this active area and just paste it. This is very important in the calculations. And you, by now, you know how to calculate the active PV module area. We can list this, this transmittance up to absorptance product, no change. Semiconductor band gap, no change. Shunt resistance, no change. Reference temperature, 25 degrees. Reference insulation, 1000. Module heat loss, total heat capacity, no change. Rated electric power output is about 100 watts. And you can just ignore the PV panel efficiency schedule because it's not going to be related with the efficiency. So we will, the Energy Plus will calculate the solar conversion efficiency at each time step. So it's not kind of a schedule based, it's not fixed, is just changing and cal being calculated using this performance model inputs at each simulation iteration. That's why we are providing that much of inputs. Okay, up to now, we only changed two of these and they are indicated by red letters. But let's move on to current because we need to define some properties about the current characteristics, the voltage characteristics and some nominal operating cell temperatures. In the current characteristics, there is the short circuit current, model current at max power, maximum power point, and the temperature coefficients of short circuit current. This is the temperature dependency factor. We have a temperature dependency factor for the current, and we have another temperature te te dependency factor for the voltage. Now at the current, short circuit current, you can find it in the manufacturer's tables. But please, Pay attention to the fact that from the manufacturer spec sheets you will find the short circuit current under standard test conditions STC but not nominal operating cell temperature conditions or nominal operating conditions NOC. We should focus on this table. It may be located at different places at different manufacturers data. All you need to pay attention is to choose this to have a look at this STC table and get the data from it and only use the data from STC conditions. So we can find this short circuit current here, ISC 3.02 and go back to design builder and just plug in this number. And the second one, module current at max power. So module current at max power, maximum power current here is IMPP and it's called uh, and it's given as 2.75 and I know it's 2.75 and then next job is temperature dependency coefficient. So there's a little bit of detail here. I am to show to you how to calculate the temperature coefficient for the short, short circuit current from the spec sheets. This is an extremely easy and straightforward process. We should go back to this manufacturer's sheets. Now, uh, normally manufacturers usually provide this information and sometimes called TC, ISC, as a percentage of degree Celsius, which means a percentage change in the current per degree Celsius change. How this is affected? Is it increasing or decreasing positive or negative signs? However, you see the unit is percentage over degree Celsius. However, Design Builder and Energy Plus requires the actual change in terms of amp per Kelvin. Kelvin degree Celsius no problem because it's a delta. Delta degree Celsius is equal to Kelvin. But here it is actual amp actual current per Kelvin. So when I look at the manufacturer's data, it is percentage. It's not the actual value. How to get rid of this complexity? So we go back to manufacturer spec sheets. We will use the calculator, very easy. All you need to do is find the short circuit current under uh, standard test conditions, which was 3.02, right? We did it before, 3.02, and then we should multiply this short circuit current with the percentage value 0 0.051 and then of course this is a percentage we should divide it by 100 and now you have the metric so now i have a 
temperature coefficient as amp per Kelvin. And now I can copy this result, right? Go back to the design builder input and I provide the number to this temperature coefficient. That is it. For the open circuit voltage, this is also reported under the table of STC. You can find it. Please only use again values for the STC. Open circuit voltage here is given VOC, VOC excuse me, 44.2. I'll go back and plug in this 44.2 as the open circuit voltage and then go back to manufacture data because I have to find the voltage at max power and it's given here max power point voltage VMPP it's 37.6 and I should plug in this number 37.6 and the temperature dependence factor again is given as volt per Kelvin now it's the same problem here it's given the temp thermal characteristics TCVOC it is minus 0.31 percentage over degree C. So again, I need to do my calculation. Just find the show open circuit voltage VOC 44.2 times this value 0.31 and just divided by 100 and I find the value. So I just copy it and go back to design builder and just paste it. But remember, this has a minus sign. Please, please pay attention. It's a minus sign. See, it's minus. I did the calculation quickly, but at the end of the process, I should add the minus sign because the temperature negatively affects the voltage. Temperature is held in the current, but the temperature is negatively affecting the voltage and voltage drops a lot with respect to current. See the differences? So, how about NO NOCT ambient temperature? 20 is okay. NOCT insulation 800 is good. NOCT cell temperature 36. It's not in here. This manufacturer doesn't provide it, but some of them provide it. It is basically 45 or 46. But for if you cannot find anything, okay, you can just assume 46. It you should be okay with that. Okay, when I am fine, I have the name, I have the old input. You see the red letters are the things that has been changed and I showed to you how to do this simple little straightforward calculations and done is a model data so I can save it I save it okay so then design will ask do we selected this new generated element as a performance model yes done it is selected okay so now everything is in place so I have the solar collector under construction the type performance type the collector type heat transfer integration mode modules in series very important and the performance model is very important oh how to calculate the simple one because there may be a simple model so I choose the simple one and there's a library for the simple before I create it but I can create another one for the simple so I say new simple let's create again and fraction of surface active cells one okay fraction of surface covered with the cells it should be one because remember we just calculate the net or active PV surface area. Conversion efficiency input mode, you can say scheduled or fixed. If you say fixed and define a value, it's always the same. Uh, a value, any value you should find it uh, again from manufacturer's data. And uh, you can put in the cell efficiency value here. Uh, if it is fixed it's always the same but you can say scheduled then you should create you should define an availability schedule efficiency schedule here again you can just copy it and paste it and change it to say panel efficiency this is my new value 1632 and then plug this number again right here at this point say okay uh, I think we have another name, so I just say, because I created a similar one before, I say OK, and then I just select it. So it can be a scheduled, but this is always the same. Or again, you can create a very detailed schedule, hour by hour schedule or seasonal schedule. In fact, in this say, it is always 0.16, no difference between fixed, 
our schedule because it's always the same value but can be changed so you can save the fixed 0.1632 new simple model and I added it so select as a new performance model yes and then select it so you can create as many as you want for different types but this is the most simplistic definition of solar PV electrical performance model in the assignment you have two types one is the equivalent one diode system one is the simple system so I show both these two so both of these two so I will choose again equivalent one diode for my model and I save SW100 mono which I created and everything is fine so this is all the things that you need to do with the uh, second and third step because the second step is the assignment the third step is the creating the performance model using manufacturer's data simple model equivalent one by model and saving it to the design builders library so that we can select for future studies in the fourth step I will explain including an electrical load center as well as a DC to AC inverter model which are the crucial components of a complete solar photovoltaic system in design builders. I will be back with another tutorial. Thank you for listening.